gift and the communion of the Holy Spirit who fills with all wisdom be with each of you. And also with you.
Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. And the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. We read responsibly Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God, while I have my need. Put not your trust in princes, is the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, he will have a favor here. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God will die on Praise the Lord. And our second reading from James chapter 2, starting at verse 1. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine, fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you, stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin, and convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed or lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving him the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
rose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came down and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophician by birth, and she begged him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee and the region of the Diapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Apathata, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged him to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measures, saying, He has done all these things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Today's gospel relates to two different miracles. Both of these miracles were performed for people that were unable to speak for themselves. In each case, there was someone else that needed to intercede for that person. The first miracle focuses on the conversation that Jesus had with the mother of the demon-possessed girl. The second miracle first focuses on the earthly means through which Jesus gave hearing and speech to the deaf man. Both of these accounts also have something else in common. The Holy Spirit inspired St. Mark to include an itinerary of Jesus' travels. It allows us to have an understanding that Jesus met both of these two people in Gentile territory. Mark just tells us that the woman who pleaded for a demon-possessed daughter was a Gentile. She was actually a Greek by birth. Since Jesus was in the region of the capitals when he restored the man's hearing, it's very likely that he was also a Gentile. Both of these accounts give witness that Jesus did not come just to save the Jews, but that he also came to save the Gentiles. There's a lot to learn from the account of the woman who pleaded for her daughter. Jesus wanted the woman to learn about the great gift of faith that she had received from the Holy Spirit. So what did Jesus do? He tested her. He said to her, First let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Jesus, with these words, did two things. First, he tested her face, faith. But secondly, he also gave her some insight into the cruel attitude that many of the Jews at that time had towards Gentiles. I would think that it was likely that some in the crowd, including some of the disciples, would agree with Jesus said and hope that the woman would just leave discouraged or just leave. What these people failed to realize was the kind of faith that the Holy Spirit was supporting in this woman. This lady was not going to give up. Nope, she answered him in verse 28. Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crow. Wow, think about the deep faith the Holy Spirit created in this woman and how he was continuing to preserve it. If the Lord said she was a dog, then she'd take the dog's share of the Lord's blessings. She would be willing to take whatever crumbs the Lord sent her way. 
When Jesus drove the demon that possessed the woman's daughter, he wasn't just driving on a demon. He was opening salvation to every tribe of every nation. He demonstrated that many of the barriers that we have in our lives, then he just simply broke each and every one of them down. He was telling them then, and us now, that he came for all people in all places at all times. From our point of view, the deaf man probably is as dramatic as a demon-possessed daughter. I thought that when I thought about that, I, went, I remember the movie The Exorcist. That demon was pretty wild. Nevertheless, the man's inability to hear was still a result of sin in the world. The devil knows that the Holy Spirit plants faith by the Word of God, as the Holy Spirit inspired St. Paul to write in Romans 10. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the Word of Christ. Since the deaf can't hear the proclamation of the Word of God with their own ears, they must see it with their eyes. The proclamation of the Word of Christ must be made visible for them. This is one of the many barriers that our sin places between us and God. We're all deaf for different reasons. Perhaps the ear itself does not detect sound. The nerves might not carry the signal from the ear to the brain. The brain itself might not process the signal properly. There are people that are born this way or become deaf because of an illness or injury. Any or all these reasons that someone is deaf. I know my wife tells me I'm deaf. When she talks to me, I don't hear her all the time. But yes, she tells me when the dog whimpers, I, I can hear it from across the, the house. But I don't know what that has to do with anything. So I think it also works the other way. I know sometimes that I'll say something to her and she doesn't hear me. I think that's intentional. Though. I think the real reason that people can't hear is not those who are physically deaf. But I think it's more people that are spiritually deaf. Most of us have physical hearing that's just fine, but they choose not to hear God's message anyway. Their excuses vary. Some folks think they already know everything that God has to say to them. I meet a lot of guys like that in my prison ministry. They think they know everything that God has to say. And the first question you ask them is, well, then what are you doing here? There's others that still that don't care what God has to say. Others are afraid that they could discover they just don't agree with what God does have to say. They don't like what the scripture says. There could be other excuses, but there are no good reasons to ignore God's words. Ultimately, spiritual deafness comes from the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature. These forces of evil want to separate us from God's word so that they can separate us from God. Their hope is to destroy our faith and the faith of our children and others around us. Their weapon in this war is to keep us away from God's word and his sacraments. Thankfully, God has promised that he will always provide faithful people to proclaim his word. These people are like the friends of the deaf man who brought him to Jesus or the mother of the demon-possessed girl who pleaded with Jesus to heal him. These people might be faithful parents who bring their children to baptism and then share the word of God with their children as they grow older. They might be friends and associates who confess their faith as they live out of their vocation in the world. The Holy Spirit works through parents, teachers, friends, neighbors, and associates. Sometimes even to a husband and wife to proclaim God's word and to bring people to Christ. As I said before, I do a lot of work with inmates, and I have a gentleman that I work with at New Lisbon Correctional, who is actually on borrowed time. He was supposed to be released a couple years ago because he was found innocent of the crime he committed after spending 28 years in prison. Uh, but he stays. He stays at the prison. He, he doesn't want to go back out in the world. Partly because he's blind and the state's going to take care of that. But the main reason he stays there is because the chaplain at New Lisbon will, will, will 
sent him Bible studies. And instead of the chaplain forming Bible studies, he gives them to this inmate. And this inmate goes from unit to unit to unit. And he sets up Bible studies. And he teaches the men about Jesus. He's really doing a lot of evangelization. He's doing a really great job. I'm so proud to be able to say I work with him. But it's the same with each of us. As these people, everyone who professes their faith to us, Jesus' work, words work in us as they did in the demon-possessed girl and in the deaf man. In the case of the demon-possessed girl, it was a simple word from Jesus that drove the demons out of her. In the case of the deaf man, Jesus combined his word with his finger in the ear and on the tongue to give hearing and speech to the man. For each of us, God places his word in our ears. He touches us in holy baptism and continues to keep us in our baptism as we confess our sins and we receive his forgiveness. He comes to us in his own body and blood, given with the bread and the wine of his supper. God uses each of these means to give us forgiveness, life, and salvation. These and these alone are the means through which the Holy Spirit bestows Christ's gifts upon each of us. The Holy Spirit uses these means because they all connect us to the cross. The cross happened over 2,000 years ago, and I believe probably over 6,000 miles away. We can't surmount the barrier of time or culture that separates us from the cross. Nor can we break down the barrier of our own sinful culture that we live in today. Just as Jesus broke down the barrier of culture and communication in the gospel today, so God breaks down the other barriers that stands between us and him. The Holy Spirit uses these external means of word and sacrament to transcend these barriers so that the benefit of the cross and the empty tomb can be ours. The Holy Spirit takes away these barriers with the word and tells us of the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us on the cross. As the Holy Spirit works through the world, we learn that our sin will separate us from God, but that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross takes away all of our sins. We learn that the resurrection from the dead opens a new way to everlasting life. Through the word, Christ himself reveals himself to each of us. In that revelation, he also reveals the Father and the Holy Spirit and the gift of salvation. The Holy Spirit uses his knowledge to make this salvation personal through the gift of faith. When the Spirit joins the Word to the water of baptism, He joins us to Christ in that crucifixion so that the price that Jesus paid for sin is credited to each one of us. By joining us to the death of Christ on the cross, the Spirit also joins us to the resurrection of Christ. We become brothers and sisters of Christ and sons and daughters of the living God. We have the right and the privilege to come before God, confess our sins, and receive the comfort of forgiveness of all of our sins. We are heirs to eternal life in heaven. When the Spirit joins the Word to the bread and wine, Jesus himself comes to us in the body that he gave for us, in the blood that he shed for us. As we take him into our mouths, he feeds our souls. He strengthens our faith in Him. He has promised that the sacrament is ours in the forgiveness of sins. And we hear in the words in the words of institution, this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. We need to hear that twice in the service. We hear it at the beginning, but then we hear it at the words of institution. And we hear that because we forget that we're forgiven. We need to be reminded. We need to be reminded constantly that our sins are forgiven. <coughs> Jesus has promised us with this sacrament that our sins are forgiven. And with the forgiveness of sins comes life and salvation in Him. Through these means, the Spirit brings forgiveness, 
life, salvation from the cross to each of us. Without these means, we would have no faith, no forgiveness, no salvation, and our eternity would be more terrifying than anything we could ever imagine. We should be very thankful the Spirit works through God's people to minister these means of grace. As the Spirit inspired Isaiah to say in Isaiah 52, How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who, pu publish, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. You know, God's process for sustaining his son's church is just totally amazing to me. Just as the mother pleaded for her daughter to be healed, just as the deaf man's friends also brought him to Jesus, so also God the Father works through his people to bring his word into our lives. He brings his word to our ears. He uses the water of holy baptism to join us to his son, Jesus Christ. Then the word made flesh comes to us in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper. The Spirit works through these words to, prove, to work faith in each of us, and he brings us into his church. As the Spirit keeps us in the one true faith, he sends, sends us into the world to confess the faith that he has given us, and so in this way, to spread his word throughout the world. Again, in my prison ministry on Thursday nights, we're at Fox Lake Correctional. We do a Bible study working with the men there. And we're seeing a, a different breed of people coming in, people that are more desperate, more willing to do whatever they have to, to get what they want. But what we try to do is give them God's word, put that in their hearts, allow God to make a change in their life. And then what do we do? We send them out into the field at Fox Lake Correctional, or at Oshkosh Correctional, or at New Lisbon Correctional, or at Wall Pond, or any of the other places. Because those fields of those places are so fertile. There's so many places that we can reach people and bring the word of God. Because eventually, 90% of these guys will be back on the street. I'd rather see them as Christians and they'll back the way they were. That's our goal, is to bring Christ into their hearts. But yet, we are all called to confess our faith to our family, friends, associates, and all of the people that are in our lives. So each of us are called to do the same thing. He has promised to use that confession to bring others to Christ for healing. Healing that produces faith and delivers forgiveness. <laughs> In this amazing, crazy way, Jesus has promised that his message will travel through the entire world and that his church will grow. In this way, he will bring many around the world into heaven to live with him forever. Amen.
Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit.
anyone has the wrapper uh, with the wine and the host, you want to bring it up and pull it out and we can take the body of Christ that was shed for you and then drink the wine for the blood of Christ that was given to you. Thank you. 